Cavs owner Dan Gilbert releasing a statement last night. What? Very different tone, very different font oh. than what we saw before. Saying, LeBron, you came home and delivered the ultimate goal. Nothing but appreciation and gratitude for everything you put into every moment you spent in a Cavaliers uniform. We look forward to the retirement of the famous 23 Cavs jersey one day down the line. Is that so hard? <laughs> Is that so hard? I, I, I'm, I, it's still, I get it. People live and they learn, right? But it's just sometimes, it's amazing to me how many times, not just the Cavs, organizations get this wrong, right? Just be cool. <laughs> be, just be cool. No, no one, it, the biggest thing you can do is not make a scene, because when you make a scene, that's what starts to reflect poorly on you. You obviously never met Dan Gilbert. No, I don't, I get it. I'm just saying. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, the difference between this time and last time was we could feel this coming. Mm -hmm. The Cavs were obviously aware that he was probably going to the Lakers for days. They didn't know at the moment it would happen. Um, before, back in 2010, <coughs> it was the buildup for days. They thought there was a decent chance he was going to pick them. When he didn't, especially on the decision show, it was a snap reaction. You tweeted it like eight hours before know, the decision show. They clearly were not following your people, Twitter feed, Brian. People <clears throat> weren't on Twitter in 2010. I missed 2010. <laughs> um, but, uh, and by the way, uh, he started, the, he started the, the, this statement with talking about the 2016 championship. And what I would encourage Cavs fans to do, and they don't have to listen to me, but the city of Portland has embraced the 1977 Blazers championship. They've branded it as a great moment in the city. Even many people who were not even born recognize the value of that. There's a good chance Cleveland's not going to win a championship for a while, although I'm rooting for the Indians this year. <laughs> but I think they should brand this moment, and I appreciated that Dan Gilbert opened talking about how special 2016 was. Not only getting that championship, but the dynamics of the way it went down. They need to immortalize that championship and respect it and know that LeBron's at the center of it. And Dan they, hit those notes in they that. They already have, though, yeah. don't you think? You know what? I mean, I, I, especially now that LeBron is gone, I think it's going to be imperative. And I appreciated that Dan did that in that. I think it's interesting, though, how far sort of the NBA culture has come since 2010, where you go from the reaction you saw when he went to Miami to now, where it's almost over the top with the gratitude and no hurt feelings <laughs> and nothing. I mean, nobody wants to say anything. Are you anything. Dan for being no one nice wants to say anything? No, no. Small no, but there. no one wants to say anything bad. It's almost, it goes back a little bit with Durant, too. It's like the criticism, especially in the media, was... I mean, it was really muted. I feel like, oh, he's joining a 73-win team. We're going to act like this is normal <laughs> and leaving the team he'd played for for a long time. So I, I think that you don't need to go overboard necessarily with the gratitude. I mean, he, he delivered a championship. He delivered what he said he would. But still, this is, a, this is a loss. This is a painful loss. There was nothing I felt like in the sports quite as charming as, as him there, as the hometown kid who came back to that place and something has been lost, too, even though something's obviously been gained here in L.A. Yeah, and, and look, they're left in a spot that they have not been used to in recent years. Yeah. First of all, Nike already bringing down the banner of LeBron there in Cleveland, so you won't see that up very, very much longer. But on the basketball side, the Cavs have told Kevin Love, both you and Dave McBenamin have reported, that they don't intend to trade him. That runs counter, frankly, to what a lot of basketball people are saying, which is, hey, their draft pick for next year the Atlanta Hawks own it unless it's in the top 10. So there are a lot of people who say, yeah. hey, guys, the smart thing to do is trade Kevin Love, trade Kyle Korver, get some picks back, tank, get your pick for next year, build around Colin Sexton and whoever else you draft and bring in, and, and start the rebuild with everyone kind of in the same age group at the same time. Kevin Love wants to stay, and he wants to stay for a couple reasons. First of all, it's... A little more room in the locker room to breathe when LeBron is gone, and he kind of gets to be Minnesota Kevin Love again, and he's going to be going into his next contract summer, and wouldn't it be nice to be kind of putting up the big numbers and be the all-star and all of that? And also just, we've talked to Kevin a lot over this past season. I think he could do with some stability as well. Do you think he's going to get it, though? Well, let me just say this. Talking to some executives, yes, that's what the Cavs have told Kevin Love, but if you call the Cavs, they won't hang up the phone on you if you make an offer for Kevin Love. So while they're not selling him, you know, there is a possibility that there could be a deal. But th th they have their reasons for why they're thinking this way, but it's July 2nd. Things could change, certainly by October and even maybe more so by February. Can I just throw this out there? You said there's charming. A kid goes back yeah. to where he grew up. and Kevin Love's from Oregon. He's from Lake Oswego. Just throwing that out there. If you're the Portland Trailblazers, we talked about it yesterday, mm -hmm. Damian Lillard's 
uh, impending frustration with what's happening. Maybe that's a nice little package you can get. And there's, there's, there's room to make a deal there. The, the, the Blazers have a young player or two and possibly draft picks. Yep. And it's, it's an arms race in the West right now. That would be a heck of a salvo. I would say the only argument in the other direction is you've just lost LeBron, as Lee says. There is an emotional impact from that going straight from that into a deep tank. And I understand, look, I just laid out the basketball reasons to tank. Rip I just laid them off. out. Yeah. I get it. But here's the thing. It's not, there's no guarantee that you go into a deep tank and then get some draft picks and then you're no. better That's any quicker. True, no, and I like to you. say this. I grew up in Washington, D.C. The team that I watched growing up, forget win a title. The team that I watched growing up hasn't been back to the finals in 40 years. These cycles can be Rachel, very, very long. Rachel, I, I appreciate that. Maybe you just <laughs> hang on to it as I, long as you can. I appreciate that. One of the best things that the Cavs did in 2010, the day after the decision, was pick themselves up and make a sign and trade for four draft picks. Ended up down the line actually helping them trade for Kevin Love. So I would say that, yes, it's emotional, but you may have to pick yourself up and do what's right for the franchise, even if it seems painful. You, this, trust me, they didn't want to sign and trade LeBron. This, this, is, this isn't like what we were talking about with Toronto after they got swept. Like, this is a, where Toronto's an, a legitimately good team right now, and people are acting like you have to blow it up. That doesn't make sense. But... That's not where Cleveland is today. Yeah. yeah, and so many, so few teams are tanking this year. It seems like there is an right. opportunity well, there. We'll just wait and see. Hey, well, right. But, <laughs> but you look at Philly and where they are right now. How could that not be an example? I know that's not what the NBA wanted, but the way it's worked out, I feel like you have to look at Philly and feel like that's your well, best I think, course. I think the Cleveland. key, Lee, is what Rachel said: is that they don't have control of their draft pick. And I mean, the last they thing you have control of it. The last thing you <laughs> want to do is work to finish ninth. Right. Be in the middle and lose your pick and then sort of have a wasted right. year.